Welcome back class, Mr. Bacher here, doing another lesson from Amplify. Today we were on Unit 8A, Subunit 2, Lesson 7. Lesson 7 is Revising to Develop Showing. What in the world is showing? I will show you what showing is. First of all, we have a good example right here of the difference between showing and telling. And we're going to read this real fast and kind of talk about it. Listen. Mr. Bennett was deeply frustrated with his daughter. Even though he had asked her repeatedly to get to bed, she continued to ignore him. The second example. Mr. Bennett stomped into his daughter's room. How many times do I need to ask you to turn off the TV, he thundered. You know you've got school tomorrow. That's the difference between showing and telling. We've gone over this a little bit already one time. But this is kind of expanding upon that, okay? In that second one, at no point does the writer tell us the guy is frustrated with his daughter. He does. He shows us. He is clearly mad, but he didn't tell us. If you have a disagreement with one of your friends, you're not going to say, I'm mad. I guess you might, but most of the time, you're going to show them that you're mad. You're going to act a certain way, right? You're going to, you're going to throw your books down in frustration. You're going to slam your, your pencil across the room and throw it. Gosh, this is ridiculous. That's showing. It is more powerful by a long shot to show. We live in a world where we are shown all the time. Most of us get the overwhelming majority of our data from our eyes. So how do we translate that whenever we write? Well, we describe what we see. We describe the action that's going on. See, when you have a telling moment, you're giving people your inner thoughts, your inner feelings. And sometimes there's no way that you can possibly show a certain thing, right? Sometimes there's no words to describe a particular thing, and you have to tell, and that's fine. But usually, if we really work at it, we can actually show what's going on, and it's more powerful. So that's what we're working on today. We're going to talk about revising, okay, because we have a section that needs to get revised, and we want to kind of change what we wrote the first time and have a whole lot more have a whole lot more uh, a showing to it. So they've got a little writing prompt right here, just an example, and it says, it seemed like she really wanted to hear the story. That's underlined. Now, what you want to do is to add two sentences. It seemed like she really wanted to hear the story. Prove it. How does somebody look when they want to hear a story? Here's a good example. If you're telling a story and your friend is doing this, they don't want to hear the story. If you're telling the story, and your friend is like this, oh my God, they want to hear the story. You feel me? It's pretty easy. You can tell when somebody's interested. If you go home and you tell your parents some long, boring story about your day, and they're driving the car, and they don't nod, and they don't ask any questions. The story's not that interesting. Sorry, I break it to you. Or they're you know, very distracted because they don't want to crash the car. Totally reasonable. You kind of want to split the line there, right? You don't want to be so excited that they can't, ah! right? That'd be bad. So, but choose how to tell the story to make sure the person wants to know it. In this situation, show me that they want to hear the story. Add a couple of lines here. Okay, that's what you have to do. Okay, number five. I'm going to make an effort to underline a section for each of you in your writing so that you know where I think you've got a good opportunity to improve your writing. If you turn it in late, I'm not going to be able to do that. But I'm going to try to do that. So hopefully, you've all done the assignment. Write about one awful moment from a day at school. You remember this, it was a little while ago. But I'm gonna look at your writing and say, ooh, ooh, right there. Right there, that's the spot. 
If I have not done that, pick a spot and add to it. This is practice so that you can go ahead and add additional words to it and expand your showing. Make it more involving, make it less telling because I promise you it was telling. That's what we do. When we learn to write, we always tell. Tell me about your day. Well, I walked to school and then after. Show me the day. Show me your day. My little girl packs, that's what I'm gonna teach her. Show me. Show me everything because that's how that's the way people want to learn. Show me. How'd you do that? Right? That's more fun. So that is the first thing that you need to do is uh, revise this little bit right here. The second thing, and this is way more fun, is we're going to write about a moment when something went really wrong or really right for you during elementary school. And we're going to show the moment. So as always, I'm going to do mine real fast, okay? When I was in elementary school, I wouldn't say that I was the most popular kid. I was pretty introverted, extremely academic. Some of you might say a bit nerdy. That's okay. I remember in fourth grade the award ceremony that was held at the end of the year. And I was sitting in the crowd and the principal called my name. Well, not really. The principal said, Mike Baker. And I stood up and I looked pretty nonplussed because he pronounced my name wrong. And as I started walking up the stairs to, the, to go get my little award for whatever it was, I said near enough to the microphone, it's, it's Balker. And the principal looked perhaps a little bit embarrassed, but I guess I wasn't that worried about it at the time. And I heard a few of the kids in the back of the room laughing. So I grabbed my award and I went back down and I returned to my seat. My shoulders probably a little bit slumped, a little bit embarrassed because I don't like being the center of attention. And about 10 minutes later, the principal's giving out another award. Mike Backer, he says. And I stand up again, I walk up to the front, and I say, it's Balker, thank you. And I get my award and I go back and I sit down. And this time a lot more kids are laughing. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm embarrassed because I think they're all laughing at me because I got this weird name, right? You guys know me, Mr. Balker. But they are laughing and so I'm embarrassed. And then it's the end of the awards thing, another 15 minutes, 20 minutes later, and it's like the student of the year. Look, I'm a big nerd, I don't care, that's fine. I, I made it through, okay. Student of the year, Mike Baker. And like 30 people, other students, shout, it's Balker. And they had my back. Weird as it might be, they were laughing at the fact that the principal hadn't sorted it out. Not that I was being a jerk about wanting my name pronounced properly. And that was a fantastic moment in school as I proudly walked up the stairs, grabbed my award, smiled, said thank you, and went back down to the seat. And nobody was laughing at me that time. Did I show you? Did I show you how I felt? Sure, I have to do some telling. I have to. You have to have my inside thoughts. But I tried to show you. That's what I want you to do. I want you to show me that moment. Put me in the scene. Okay? So that's a writing assignment. Once again, 120 words. Should be a piece of cake to you guys. Um, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Thanks so much.